In the previous video I tried to make a connection between principal component analysis and taking photographs and the idea of principal component analysis was that some directions, some projections of the information are more accurate or, are, or capture more variability in the, to that information. But it's not clear what's the connection between this and data analysis. So let me go back to a concept that we have discussed in the past, which is the covariance matrix. Okay, let's play with this uh, data set. And now you can see that you can define the variance, the, the variance of X, the variance of Y, and the covariance. And you can plug all that information into this matrix, which is called the covariance matrix. And you can see here, this is the definition of the variance of the data, the definition of the variance of Y, and the covariance, which is the product of X subtracting the mean value times Y subtracting its mean value. Okay, so let's take this example. So the covariance matrix for this example is the, this simple matrix that you have here. Well, I have rounded the numbers a little bit to do the math more simple, but you can say that if you take the square root of 1.8, two times that value is going to give me more or less the range of variability of X. In the same fashion, if you take the square root of this variance here, it's going to give me more or less the range of variability of the y variable, and 2.4 is going to give me uh, the, the strength of this relationship between y and x. But why is this matrix so important? So let me illustrate you this with an example. So a matrix is a linear transformation. So let's take our data, let's center the data. So imagine that now the center of the axis is going to be the center of this graph. So we have subtracted the mean value of x and the mean value of y. And then we have the representation. So let's forget about the meaning of the covariance matrix and let's imagine that this is a kind of black box which transforms points into another point. So we're going to see this as a linear transformation. So let's take this matrix and see what happens if we multiply this matrix by a simple point x and y. And you can see here that this is a linear transformation because we are multiplying one coefficient by the, the first element, the second by the second element and so on and so forth. And you can see that this is another point with different coordinates. So basically this matrix is transforming points on the plane to other points in the plane. So let's do some examples. So let's just start with the simplest one, which is the origin. And you can see that as we have subtracted the mean value of X and Y, if you plug a zero here and there, then it's going to be the same point. So this point remains at the same place. Okay, what about one zero? Let's do the math. So 1.8 times one plus 2.4 times zero, and it's going to be 1.8. And the same for the other coordinate, and we find this point there. Okay, let's try another one. You apply the matrix, and you end up well below this, this quadrant here. Okay, another more exciting one. Minus 1, 1, then you do the same math. First coefficient times minus 1, second times 2.4, and so on and so forth. And we end up here. So you can see that we started with this polygon. It looks like a triangle, but remember that this point is invariant. It's going to end up here. And you see that we have a stress in some direction. So you can see that this point has moved into that direction that actually is going in the same direction at this point. And you can also see that this point has been straight, okay? So if you repeat this example, taking random numbers, so these blue points are random numbers, what you can see here is that this application is going to reconstruct the correlation between X and Y. So here's the original data, and now you can see this cloud of blue points is basically representing this relationship between variables. Okay, but there are two directions which are special in this transformation. So imagine that you take to these two points, minus three, one, and one third, one, and you apply this transformation. So this is the vector connecting the origin to that point, and this is the vector connecting the origin to that point. So let's apply the math. And again, 1.8 times one third plus 2.4 times one, and the second row is 2.4 times one, one third plus 8.8 .8 times one. And here you have this number that you can see that is nine times the original vector. So ap applying this transformation to this vector is simply stretching the vector, but it's not rotating the vector. And you can see here that you have this component. So basically this is called an eigenvector or an auto vector because the only thing that we are doing is scaling the vector, but we are not messing around with the components. Okay, let's try this other vector. And now you can see the same pattern. So we multiply and we end up with the same vector actually. So this is one time the original vector. So we started with minus three, one, and we end up with minus three, one. Okay, so these two vectors are special vectors which are called eigenvectors. The, the word eigen means auto because they are the only two in two dimensions, the only two vectors in which we don't have any rotation. We are just scaling them. And these coefficients are called eigenvalues. Okay, so basically what we are doing applying this matrix, the covariance matrix, is taking something which is symmetric, like this a sphere, and transforming in something which is asymmetric. And you can see that we are enlarging nine times one of the directions, which corresponds to this one, and simply leaving the other direction in the same fashion, with the same length. So this is called, this vector is called the principal component one, 
and the second vector is called the principal component too. But we could talk about, let's say, the first eigenvector and the second eigenvector. And this is one of those situations of potato potato of the song, but basically we are talking about the same stuff. Okay, but why are we talking about this uh, stuff? So this is the idea. We have found a linear transformation of x and y that rotates the axis to a new coordinates, pc1 and pc2. And this is the magic. If you calculate the covariance matrix in this new representation, you can see that the covariance matrix is simply the eigenvalues that we have computed before. So in this case, we don't have any correlation between the variables. So we have performed a couple of interesting things. The first thing is that we have put all the variance into the first direction. So the largest amount of variability it goes with principal component one. So in that sense, the first principal component has predated all the variance from, from the second component. And this is where re dimensionality reduction comes, when compression of information comes. Because when you have the situation in which one of the eigenvalues is much larger than the rest of them, and in this case we only have two to play with, we can drop this one because the information is going to be relevant. So let me show you this with an example. So let's take the original data, and now what I'm going to do is basically shrink this direction and see how the data looks like. So you can see that I'm reducing 90% of the information, another 20%, another 30%. So you can see that if we drop all the information coming in that direction, we still keep all the flavor of our data set. And the only thing that we have done is rotating the axis and dropping the directions which are less relevant. In our case, one of the eigenvalues was 9, the other one was 1. So we have performed a 90% compression just by dropping this direction. So this is why PCA is amazing. So in summary, we started with two variables and we end up with two principal components, but then we drop one of them and keep the, the other one because the variance was so large in that direction that the other one was negligible. In general, we would have n observations and n variables, and the idea is trying to find a, a projection of the data in order to have the minimum number of principal components taking all the variance or predating all the variance from all the other principal components. Finally, let me finish this video with a couple of definitions. So we're going to call the coefficients in this projection scores. So remember that we transform every coordinate x, y into something else. So in, in m dimensions, we're going to have different coefficients in this transformation. So we can reconstruct any observation as a superposition of principal components. So the idea is that each observation is going to be that coefficient times this vector plus another coefficient times the vector. And compression comes from the idea that I can safely drop all these elements and this superposition is going to be good enough in order to describe this data. And this is pretty much the idea of the eigenphases. So the idea is that only using 10 of these, this, 10 of these variables, 10 of these vectors, we have a, a good description of the image. Of course, you can use this simpler representation because in the end you're just compressing all the image in just 10 coefficients, 10 real numbers. So remember that idea anytime you unlock your phone using your face recognition software.